Yeah, I've seen an enormous amount of videos out there for off-grid solar, and yet they don't make things very simple. 99% of the people want to know what it takes for either cabin or off-the-grid living in an RV or something remote and something that's not incredibly heavy. This could be certainly lighter. Um, I'm going to uh, upgrade uh, my solar panel array to a 200 watt Goal Zero Nomad, which weighs about 12 pounds less than this 100 watt monocrystalline. Now these are two uh, 50 watt monocrystallines that actually fold up together in a briefcase. The wonderful thing about this is I have to keep uh, get to keep all my equipment uh, with. Uh, with uh, hook and loop ties fastened to the inside gap between these two solar panels. Once again, these are 250 watts that actually fold up into a briefcase. You only need four major components. This particular setup with inverter and uh, deep cycle lead acid. You can't just use a regular, you can. Not a wise idea. You need to use deep cycle lead acid marine RV batteries. They actually have a different construction even though they're flooded lead acid um, batteries. You can get these for about $105. This is 115 milliamps. Specifically, this is an Exide Nautilus 31 MDC. That's Mike Disco Charlie 31 MDC. This is a simple uh, $60 12 volt charger so you could charge your battery before heading out. You don't want to head out on a half dead or totally dead uh, uh, battery since it's going to take with a hundred watt under ideal uh, ideal conditions it's going to take you 16 hours to uh, charge this 115 um, amp hour battery that's once again under ideal conditions that's also another reason why i'm upgrading to a 200. i have three of these uh, hook up in uh, parallel with uh, the hundred and i have uh, four of 50 watts but for a very simple setup this is it. And by the way, the one thing that everybody needs to know in an off-grid solar is that you never ever hook up your charge controller to your solar panel. Say you go out and set up your solar panel, and of course two tick kickstands here that let you actually set the angle of your solar panel for the best incident uh, direct sunlight. And this unit will ship with the charge controller connected to the solar panel. This is the first solar panel connected to this box of the second solar panel and is connected directly right over here where the solar connects. And these are the two connectors that connect the uh, MC4 connectors that connect the uh, solar panel to the charge controller. If you do that before hooking up the battery, and these are the two alligator clips that hook to the battery, you'll actually burn up your charge controller. So you always, 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 before connecting the solar to the charge controller, Hook up your battery first. Battery first, then charge controller, then reverse order. Secondly, and this is a thousand watt uh, power inverter, I actually keep this in the cabin. What I'll do is I'll haul in one battery or two. I actually have two of these setups. I only need one battery at a time. A lot of people want to run heavy loads, like a high, uh, high efficiency uh, microwave or high efficiency micro refrigerator, and I understand that. I don't actually need that since I actually have a uh, wood-burning stove and a propane stove. I'm mainly concerned with lighting, recharging my laptop, and at most uh, playing a, a high-efficiency uh, television set and or a DVD-R player or uh, actually my uh, dish network box for my uh, satellite dish. Yeah, that's really off-grid living, right? But anyway... So this setup, by the way, is right at $650. You're looking at $300 for um, 100 watts of monocrystalline, uh, $200 approximately. You can get them cheaper. It's a 1,000 watt inverter. By the way, you want a pure sine wave inverter. This particular unit only has one output out here, but I use a, a simple uh, one to three uh, power strip. And uh, when I'm uh, done charging, my uh, lead acid uh, battery once again needs to be a deep cycle marine at the very least the charge controllers by the way have input for ideal even though they're depends on who makes them and what capacity agm the best is to uh, get a gel the very best would be lithium but they're obnoxiously expensive the lithium battery alone will cost you 100 amp hour cost you twice as much as all of this stuff combined 99 percent of the people out there that's kind of a rough estimate 
use uh, deep cycle marine batteries like this and 115 amp hours and of course everything I'm running stuff off of uh, solar charging is watt hours but nevertheless at 115 amp hour rated battery that's a deep cycle like this which has a really long life for 105 bucks roughly is an incredibly great purchase um, you go on eBay and get two sets of these these are alligator clips I whipped out my soldering iron and just made the soldered the ends to hook back to the inverter Leave this in the house, I haul the battery in, or you actually have an enclosure so you don't actually have to move the battery since it's obnoxiously heavy. It's something like 70 pounds. It's an awful lot of lead in there. I'll just unhook um, the charge controller first, then unhook my battery, and if you need to move it, fine. I mean, if you're on an RV, you may or may not have to move it regarding uh, placement of where you actually have it at. And then hook up my uh, inverter. I just drop the two hour alligator clips on top of my positive and negative terminals in my battery, power the unit on and just run my appliances or charge my laptops or cell phones or whatever I need to do. But I'm gonna upgrade to a 200 watt so I can actually get uh, recharge time on a 100 watt, even though, I mean a 100 uh, amp hour, even though it's 115 amp hour, down to right at about eight hours under ideal conditions. Actually be more like 10 hours, 10 hours ideal conditions on recharge on this, but that was from a full discharge. Nobody really, most of the time, is doing a full discharge on a 100 amp hour battery, unless they're you know running heavy load appliances, like refrigerator or uh, a microwave, for example, one of the miniature microwaves. They really drop them down to about 40% on average, so you're only looking at an average each day of about six hours plus of recharge time on a 100 amp hour battery like this. So you'll need two sets of alligator clips like this, and those are $20 a pop, a uh, $200 inverter. I recommend a 200, um, 200 watt um, solar panel. Uh, specifically, I'm getting the four fold section Nomad, and that one is uh, $599, so $600 for that. But a 100 watt foldable like this briefcase unit is average between Goal Zero or Renergy, for example, or other people, it's gonna run you 300 and 330 dollars. But just remember, never ever bring your solar panel out, because that's what everybody does, they set their solar panel up, and nine times out of 10, they'll have their charge controller hooked up, and the battery won't be hooked up. You never wanna do that. You gotta make sure that your charge controller and your solar panel are disconnected, or you're gonna fry your solar, your charge controller. The connection on this 100 watt unit for hooking up the charge controller are these uh, four um, RC4 uh, connectors right here. And once you uh, hook up your battery first, then hook up your charge controller, then you're ready to rock. What you do need to do is set your uh, charge controller and you hold down, depending on the charge controller, hold down one button. It'll have a function asking whether it's AGM battery, flooded battery, gel battery or lithium battery, which is obnoxiously expensive. I really love these suitcase solar cells. Really, really nice. These are also two right now. I have a sleet and super ice storm outside since I have three of these in the house. If my power goes out, which it like did last month, you know, I'm ready to rock with my computer and recharging everything I need and uh, even running my microwave off of uh, three of these that I have here. So, and uh, you do need a power inverter. Get a good pure sine wave power inverter. It doesn't have to be a thousand watts. I do recommend thousand watt minimum. Um, thousand watt minimum requires a 100 amp hour uh, battery on a lot of the uh, pure sine wave inverters. So whatever you do, don't buy a standard car battery. Um, these deep cycle, they're non-starting batteries. They stay steady and they keep steady and they are deep cycle. By definition, the design and the uh, the bulkiness of the plates inside the lead acid battery. Because again, you're thinking of marine deep cycle batteries. I love these Nautilus Exide batteries, which is their cheapest end of. Uh, these are made in Kentucky, by the way. Cheapest end of their deep cycle marine batteries are great, especially at 100 bucks a pop. That's a really great value. You can get these at like uh, that car store. You know where they sell. Uh, you know sprays for your car and um 
You know, what are, the, what are those uh, silly stores called where they just sell simple car stuff like cleaning your car? Anyway, you can get them at Walmart or anything like that. This one, I actually highly recommend this one. Get a, at least a 2 amp because a 1 amp will take too damn long to charge up a battery like this. And the reason you have one of these is so you could charge it while you're driving through your cigarette lighter with an adapter or charge it at your home before you go to your cabin or before you go on your outing. So at least get a 2 amp. This is a no-co. 2 amp Genesis. That's what the 2 stands for, is a 2 amp. They have a 1 amp, a 2 amp, and a 5 amp. Uh, the 2 amp is like 60 bucks. What I use is a 30 amp DeWalt charger. These are uh, $98, and they will recharge these uh, really large batteries a whole lot quicker. And they're really nice. Uh, so that is uh, the DeWalt battery charger. I also will tell you uh, voltage to percentage remaining on charge and how much uh, current is being drawn to the battery which will also give you to an indication of how close it is to being recharged but uh, there it is and simple you have four major components your solar panel your charge controller your battery and your inverter once you have this sucker charged, all this stuff kind of becomes irrelevant because then all you need is your inverter, hook the alligator clips to your battery, plug in your appliances, and you're ready to rock. So this is DIY solar on the super simple because simplicity is divinity. Let me know if you have any questions. This is, uh, I said I'm going to upgrade to a 200 watt and that's going to be my cabin rig. The 200 watt is a little bit smaller than this by about 30 percent and it weighs half as much but it's more fragile these are a lot tougher because they're inside a glass in the front like i said the solar panels are facing outwards right now uh, these are a lot tougher but they weigh a lot more so it doesn't matter whether it's a energy or goal zero all of these are a whole lot uh, heavier but they do come with nice uh, kickstand legs that actually come out and let you angle it to the correct incident sunlight is required Thanks for watching. Goodbye.